just general information on on, on what's not equations and conversions and so on. A little breeze. Here. It'd be nice to do if we had time. Would be actually to see, to see if the engineer was right. We don't have as quite as much time as we like, so we're just going to do a little bit of show and tell, and then think about the numbers a little bit. The overall goal to look at is the retention ponds, which are, at the moment are out of sight. But we're going to go over there, stand in the grass, enjoy the view, but also look down on the ponds, and then think about, we are, we're standing in probably part of the drainage area that feeds into those ponds. And it runs up to the top of the side of the hill, to the parking lot. All these areas, the runoff, can be caught in those ponds and delayed from getting into rivers. Now, we're, I'm already a little bit ahead of myself. I'll go back a couple steps back to fundamentally why do we have retention ponds. The basic idea, the basic, and it relates to a problem, the problem is whenever you pave a surface, you know, which used to be grass or field or something like that, pavement doesn't allow water to sink in. When it rains in the field, some amount of the rainwater just sinks right into the ground and there's less runoff. But if it rains on pavement, there pretty much is nowhere for water to go, it all runs off. So what does that do to floods? If you pave a large, large area, what does, that, what does happen if you have more pavement in an area for a rainfall? What's the water go? It runs off into right into the streams, and so floods get bigger. If you have too much pavement in a given area, 